Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I want to show you how you can create a revolution slider and add it to your WordPress website. Now I'm talking about revolution slider version 5 because there were some uh, essential changes that made the creation of sliders a bit more complicated, a bit more confusing. So I just want to show you how to do it in version 5. Now website sliders are just an amazing feature for any website and I just want to quickly show you a uh, very famous example of course on the website of apple.com you can find a good example for a slider actually quite a simple slider if you're not familiar with it but uh, yeah you have you have uh, different slides with different titles and uh, call to action buttons on them and you have these little bullet points where you can um, navigate to the different slides okay so yeah let's show let's see how we can implement this in wordpress so um i'm already on the revolution slider menu here all you need to do is you go to your dashboard and uh, yeah you go to this revolution slider menu on the left so if you're familiar with any previous versions of revolution slider you're kind of familiar with some of the basics and uh, yeah, anyway, I will explain it anyway for the people who have never worked with Revolution Slider before. Now, just to show you what I want to achieve in this video, I have a very simple website. There is just this background default image, a title and a call to action button. Now, this is very nice, but um, I need to get rid of this. So, I actually get rid of this whole row. I click on OK. And I get rid of it and I already added a new row here on the top. And this is the location where I want to add the revolution slider. Now, you might be wondering what are these elements? These are elements of the Visual Composer, a very good page builder that you can use to flexibly, very fast, create amazing websites. But uh, yeah, of course, this is not the content of this video. But just if you were wondering, um, you can also find a link in the description to this uh, amazing premium plugin now anyway let's go back to our revolution slider menu and the first thing that we're going to do is of course to create a new slider we click on this big plus here and then this screen appears there are already lots of options lots of functionality so don't get confused by this we actually don't have to change too much here all we have to do is make sure it's the default slider selected here in the first, the content source. And in the second one, you just enter any name, just slider one, as it is already suggested here in the example. And also as an alias, you just enter slider one. And the result is that we get a short code created for us that we can put in our clipboard. We just copy it and yeah, we go back to our page. If you don't use the Visual Composer, you can just add it to your text editor, the default editor in uh, in WordPress. But I want to add a text block to it. I get rid of the default text and just replace it with the short code. I click on save. And that is all we have to do here for now. Now the slider is implemented, but the slider itself doesn't exist because it doesn't have any slides. Now let's continue here in this menu. The next thing we want to do is to select a slider type as it says here. Now we could go for standard slider or hero scene or carousel slider. I will just stick to the standard slider for now. You can play around with the other options yourself. It is quite interesting but for now let's just create a standard slider. In the next part here we select a preset and I will select the slideshow full width which is the second option here. Now it is very important to save every step after we change something in our settings and you might be wondering where the save button is unless you're familiar with this it's on the very far right here you cl just click on save settings it's very important because if you don't then all your settings are gone. Now just as a little side note here if you don't own the Revolution Slider so far and if you're if you're interested in buying it, I would be thrilled if you would click on the description link that I provided 
and uh, would buy it via this link um, because if you do like this I would get a little bit of credit for this and uh, yeah this way you could probably thank me for making this video and giving you this great introduction to the revolution slider. Now anyway let's continue with our slider creation here. Um, we click on the slider that we just created which is empty so far and the next point now is to of course add slides to it. It already is selected the first slide and uh, just from the main background and source we go and select a background image. Here it says change image and I already uploaded some files into my WordPress media library. Now one thing is important to remember as you can see here, see here when I select the different images, the image size should be the same among all of the images that you want to include into your revolution slider. I selected 1200 pixels times 620. Now this is a very unusual format actually. It is not as high as the usual 16 to 9 format. And this is because I want the whole slider to be visible when the page is entered. Like in the case of this Apple slider here, it is not a very high image as you can see here. It just ends right below the browser window here. Now of course you can use bigger images, just play around it with this, but one, the most important thing is of course that all of the images have the exact same format. Now I select this picture here to be the first slide and then I click on save. I will continue this step for all of the other slides and I click on plus here and add blank slide and I'll just skip this step for you. All right, I have included all four images as individual slides and we can go to our website and click on update here. The short code is implemented here and then if we preview the changes then we can already see that the slider is implemented and it is working. We can select the different slides and yeah, it is already a quite professional slider. You see also these arrows here and the bullet points at the bottom. Very, very nice. Now let's continue to customize it. The next thing that I want to do is to look at the general settings for the slider. We go to the slider settings menu where we've been before and open the general settings. Here you have a couple of options. I don't want to go into detail for each of these, but we can click on default. And one um, feature here is of course to change the duration, the default slide duration. Um, yeah, and it's at the moment at 9,000 milliseconds. And I want to put it to 6,000 milliseconds that uh, the slides change a bit faster. So I click on save. And uh, then I want to go to navigation. And this is where you can um, change the style of the arrows. You can also disable them. These little arrows that let you navigate between the slides. Um, you can just use a different kind of style. I like this Uranus quite a lot. It's, it's very simple. And uh, yeah, you can also change the visibility, whether they should always be visible, only if you hover or not at all and uh, the position of them very good and the same you can change for the bullets itself uh, i'll let you play around with this yourself but um, i just want to change the style of our slider and i also change it to this uranus style and now let's continue with the settings for the individual slides so we just go back to the slide editor again and uh, yeah let's have a look at the first slide because it's already selected for us now what i want to do first here is introduce you to the ken burns effect and how to apply it to your slides now the ken burns is one of the best features of the revolution slider at least in my opinion it's a really really fancy feature and it's for example not even available here in the Apple slider. Now, of course, they might have the reasons for that, but let me just quickly show you what the Ken Burns effect is if you're not familiar with it so far. With the Ken Burns effect activated, this slide, for example, would zoom into a certain point, usually just the center on default of this image, which just give an amazing motion feature to this whole slider. Now let me just demonstrate it to you. You have this first setting of scale in percent. The default is 
from 100 to 100, which is of course no scaling. If I enter here 140% instead, it would zoom in to 140% size of the image. Now, two furthermore settings are very amazing. These are the horizontal and vertical offsets. These offsets mean that the picture would not only zoom in in the center, which is the default, but it would shift horizontally or vertically at the same time. You can of course also combine vertical and horizontal offsets. Now what I want to do is shifting the image a bit to the right. So it should zoom into the right part of the picture, but just horizontally. Now, in order to do so, you actually have to add a negative value because if I just add 200, it would zoom into the left side of the picture. If I add minus 200, it will go to the right side of the picture. Let me save that. And now it looks like this. An amazing Ken Burns effect. The next thing that I want to show you are the slight animations uh, that you can adjust here. And of course you can adjust the slide animations for each slide individually. We still look at the first slide I want to use as an example. And yeah, the default appearance, the default slide animation for a slide is the fade effect as you already saw before. That already looks quite nice, but especially if you have a lot of slides that can be a bit boring if it's just fade all the time. Let's just add another transition to it, but actually I want to do it for the second slide because the first slide appears automatically in the beginning and I want to change the effect when the second slide appears. So I go to slide animations and instead of fade or actually I add to fade, I add a simple slide effect and uh, I use one of those and you can already see this preview here they appear from different directions, from right, from left, from the bottom or top. And I would just use a slide to right and add it to this list. Now it says here, order in loops. Now what does that mean? We first have fade and then slide to right. So that would mean that the first time this slide gets loaded, it fades in and the second time it slides to the right. Let's have a look. We reload the page and here's the first slide now let's skip to the second one it fades in let's go back to the first one and again to the second one and now it slides to right now you can make such a long list of different transitions here or you can just use two different kinds you have lots of flexibility here and yeah, this is just a really, really nice feature. Of course, I let you play around here with the rest of the features. It's just far too much to show it all to you in this video, but there are amazing further effects possible. Okay, now let's add some content to our slides. We go back to the first slide and uh, or first I want to show you uh, what I actually want to do right now. Now let's use this example of the Apple slider again. Uh, in the beginning I said here is this text on the slides and here are these buttons as well. Now this is great. I mean it is possible to have different kinds of contents of each slide on each slide. Uh, in the revolution slider you would just select a slide and then move a bit further down to this preview field here. Now for this to show you, I actually have to decrease the size of the browser display here because my laptop screen is not big enough to show this entire preview picture here. It is maybe not very, very well organized here by the revolution slider. Anyway, it is possible somehow. Now here in the top left, you have an element at new layer and then you can add a couple of different elements as a top layer to this slide and of course you would do this individually for each slide if you want to have individual or different element on each slide. What I actually want to show you which is one step further and sometimes a bit hidden in the slider features here is I want to have the same content, the same title and the same button on each of the slides. You would do this via the global layers. So it is like an additional layer that is displayed on all of the slides. All you see here is kind of an 
empty or transparent background because there is no slide picture for all of the slides. And then we add a text to it. We just give it a sample title of amazing, beautiful title. And yeah, this is the default look. It doesn't look too great, but uh, of course you can just adjust the font size, uh, the font family here, the font size you can do in the top here. Yeah, 60 looks great. And then here you can align the title horizontally and vertically. And I want to have this title right in the middle of the screen. I actually also want to change the color of it. I want to have it white. Now I add a second row of text to it. Pretty sub headline. Yeah, I just deselect it. It's also 60 pixels. That's maybe a bit too big. I just added uh, it to 40 pixel. It should also be Roboto, Roboto, of course. And the color should also be white. Okay, now I want to align it center. Uh, now I can click again, center, maybe a bit higher, just below the headline. And um, yeah, the last thing that I want to add is a button. And you have a couple of example choices here. And I just use a sample one. You have many, many options here to, to change the color, to change the hover state even, to change the text and yeah, all this stuff. It, it takes some time to get used to all these settings, but um, don't get overwhelmed by it. Um, it is just too much. But if you know where the essential settings are, it can be very, very helpful. Now I want the text size on the button to be, hmm, let's see, about 50 pixel. That's, that's great. It sh should be white. It's already white. I also center the alignment. And as you can see here, the, the paddings around the button are not too great. So you can just click on this additional plus here and then you get another row of settings. So for the padding, you just go to background and here you can uh, change the paddings for all of the sides. Now the top should be about 30 pixel, the bottom e uh, the same, and then on each side it should be about 40, maybe even 50 pixels on both of the sides. Now this is just a very, very nice sample button and I save it and this is how our slider looks right now with the text on it. And if the slides change, the text will still be there. You have the same button and the same text on every slide. Very, very nice, very beautiful. And of course you can just connect it to any website you like. Um, for this to work, you select the button, it is selected, and then you click on action. And then you can say plus action and at the moment it's disabled. And of course you can also mouse enter, mouse leave. You can even go to a new website when you just enter the button with the mouse. And you can just enter a simple link and then enter the URL for that. So quite intuitive, but of course you also have to know where it is. So this is actually the challenging task in here. Right, these were the most important features of the Revolution Slider version 5. I hope you liked this video. And again, if you're, if you're interested in buying this Revolution Slider, I would be very happy if you would use the link that I provided in the description for it, because uh, I would get a little bit of reward for that, for this video. And uh, yeah, I hope you really learned something in this video. The Slider Revolution is an amazing feature, is an amazing plugin, uh, but it can be quite daunting if you first use it, uh, have no experience with it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.